Yeah! Scrapyard Wars! <laughs> Scrapyard Wars 2, The Scrappening. I started off the morning by picking up this case and a fan and a power bar. I'll explain why the power bar in a little bit. But first things first, I need to do a case swap. I didn't realize the bottom hard drive cage was riveted in. That will have to be removed, but it's fine for now. I bought this Core 3000, but it's dusty and gross as hell. Um, none of the pictures he had on Craigslist showed how dusty it was, but it's still a nicer overall case than the one that I had, and I didn't have any time left to buy anything else, so I was like, whatever, might as well just spend my money on it. Honestly, if I had more time, I might not have even accepted it. I probably would have accepted it, I just would have hopefully had more time to clean it. I wonder what Fractal Josh will say when he sees that I mutilated his case within like minutes of having it. I'm gonna say, I thought you had style, man. Stop making Linus look good. What am I gonna see next for me? Socks and sandals? Just remember, buddy, karma's a bitch. Um, I'm trying to get the pump and the radiator higher so that I can clear the power supply. Just fill up your computer. You can just be like, all right. Except you won't have to fill it up because the computer's going to short when you try to turn it on. So don't worry about it. You know, I don't even care anymore. As long as the loop works, <laughs> screw the computer. What's going to end up happening here is I'm going to end up gluing a whole bunch of these cables unintentionally, but it's going to happen. A whole bunch of those cables are going to be glued together. Then I just have to try to use whatever is available to me to try to make it stop leaking. I have a tiny bit more epoxy, not much though, and I have one full pack of Shigeru and one and a quarter, possibly a bit, stuff of more Shigeru. The chances of this right here not leaking are like 1%. I 100, I 99% believe that it's gonna leak. I mean, can you imagine if I have to present a leaky system to the judges? So we need a bigger piece of copper from the Metal Mart to uh, put over top of our CPU here. Now, was that a WTF look or what? I just realized I'm holding an invoice for one of their competitors that, uh, that is, Unfortunately, I just realized it as well. Well, for what it's worth, the thing we have isn't going to work. I don't see it. Hmm? No, not the stuff you made for us the other day. Yeah. I need basically that, yep. but three and five eighths by three and five eighths. Okay, so we're, we're hooped then. Let's go to Metal Market then. That. Where is this? Oh, it's up, uh, really close. Street or two oh, it's way above. It's, oh, it's like past Colossus. the Colossus. Oh, that's all right, <laughs> can nothing go right today? And now there's a freaking train. Absolutely brilliant. So we're just gonna sit here and wait for a train to go through completely the center of Langley City. Everywhere we shop, people keep telling me they hope I have a great day. Not having a great day. This put me, by every possible way of accounting for it, over budget. We couldn't find the mounting hardware we need. So, we're just gonna cheat. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Linus One, is cheating? Two. Wait a minute, why am I acting surprised? Introducing Luca Frenier's all-new patented power panel. Equipped with a six-foot cable, so you can plug yourself in super far away. Yeah. Your stuff that isn't gonna work at all, because it's gonna be covered in water and metal. It's gonna short itself out and then short itself out again. Wanna go leak test it? Almost. Almost. This works. 
And whatever leaked didn't actually leak much. I don't even know what it is. Because the cloth like didn't even get wet really. If we watch long enough, I'm bound to do something clever eventually. Mmm, uh, copper sugar. New plan. We're gonna find a much bigger object to coil around, maybe one of these five gallon buckets. And we are going to make an external coil that we put on the side panel here. Um, we have no choice. I don't know if it'll fit. I don't know if it'll fit in there. What if we went right on top? And we kind of like spread it out a little bit. Actually, that could kind of work. All right, so John is sleeping, so we're gonna try and get our copper tubing inside our case, somehow. Let's drill a hole. I'm sure someone's gonna point this out. I know this is a wood hole saw. I know this is steel. I know that's a problem. Just so we're all on the same page. Can we make it through this puppy? Okay, let's go see if John's home. Or awake. I'm gonna send this video to John when we're done. And he's just gonna be like, what the hell? He's gonna be, he's gonna be amazed that we got as far as we did without his help. Okay, so we finished cutting out the little cutaway that we need for the caps that are next to the socket. But what we haven't done is actually finished the surface of the CPU block where it's gonna make contact with the CPU. So for that, we actually need to change the bit. So this is what we're using? Yeah, this little guy here, it's, it's more for milling. That means that there's a cutting blade here and a cutting blade over here. And that goes in, takes the place of this little bit here. So it goes in like this and then I center everything and I just set it up so it, the ne next time it goes past and s here, it's gonna be taking about a thou off. So it'll just clean this up. It'll make it look like it, you got it in the store. Now the college educated among you will have probably noticed that there are some definite marks on the bottom of the block. That's actually not as important as having a flat surface because our thermal compound is gonna fill these little micro scratches yeah, in I'll, the surface here. We'll smooth those out too. Oh, we can do that too? Yeah, 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 good old fashioned sandpaper. Oh my goodness. Right? Just... None of the judges will ever see and appreciate the block manufacturing that went on. All they're gonna see is this copper plate with a couple of nubbins sticking out of it. They're not, gonna, they're not gonna know what's going on under the hood here. So I want the audience to at least appreciate the uh, magnificence of our water block here. Now, we could have done better if we'd done certain things, and I'm aware of the things that we could have done better, like for example, having a rubber gasket sealing this or not using mixed metals, but hey, for a homemade block, that we know nothing about its performance yet. Pretty darn good. Someone might be wondering how you drain this sleep. The answer is you don't ever do that. It's impossible. As far as I can tell, considering everything is epoxied together, it would literally be impossible to drain the sleep. Unless you inverted the computer and then poured it out of there. But if you're gonna do that, this stuff at the bottom isn't fixed and everything's probably gonna break. I'm just, I'm stuck here for a while. <laughs> I have to hold each side of this tightly so that water doesn't come through so that the epoxy can hopefully dry. How long does it take? Usable strength in eight hours. We're kind of, uh, we're kind of stuck for about 30 minutes here. So all that's left is to solder our tubing onto the CPU block, fuse the CPU block with some kind of a sealant, probably just silicone because we're not at the point where we can do anything fancy anymore. Do up our reservoir and build the computer. That's where we're at. It is now the end of the fourth day of Scrapyard Wars 2. The judges are going to have to be extremely generous for me to get anything resembling a competitive score in this competition. I'm gonna give it one more coat of epoxy, but I think we're done. I think that's it. Yeah, one more coat of epoxy, but I'm basically calling it right now. I'm just gonna do one more coat, but I'm, I'm finished. 
I'll bring it out to the garage after this and just let it sit. All right, so as you can see, it's getting dark. Taryn's gone home for the night, but John, out of the graciousness of his heart, is still helping me because we still have to attach the pump to the reservoir. And I think we've got a plan. It wasn't my plan. I think we've got a plan that's going to work. If she fits, she sits. Just like that. Nice and tight. Now we wanted a clear silicone for this, but Home Depot is a little closed at the moment. So uh, we went with a white one. It's not as pretty, but it should seal up just nicely. We'll know in half an hour. We're gonna use our sealant and four screws here to close up the block yep. that I actually had almost no hand whatsoever in actually making. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Silicone seal. Yep. Here we go. So it's finally pour time. I have very little confidence in this seal at the uh, for the power cord for the pump, but at the very least, we can find out how everything else is doing. No obvious leak at the pump outlet. That's the most essential because worst case scenario, our judges aren't that water cooling savvy. So we could just, um, we could just try to get away with one here and just have our water level down here. Okay, so that caulk is clearly dissolving. Either because in half an hour it's not cured enough or because it just plain wasn't gonna work for this. So I had 100% silicone in my bathroom drawer. Our pump doesn't have enough head pressure to start our loop. We might be able to tip it to make it a little bit easier on our pump. The good news is our CPU block isn't leaking yet. So that's the good news. There isn't much good news right now. That was all the good news I had. Whoa, hey, look at that. Okay, so basically what we're doing right now is cleansing the system of all the junk and debris and, and dissolved crap that's in there now. Then what I'm gonna do is take the CPU block and the reservoir parts that are bad apart Redo them with silicone, let it set overnight, and hope that by 24 hours they mean 12 hours. For better or for worse, this computer is liquid cooled. Well, you know what? Hold on, hold on. Let's go ahead and ask who you guys think is gonna win. I think Luke will win Scrapyard Wars 2 The Scrappening. He's taller. I think Luke will win. If he doesn't, we all lose. I think Luke is gonna win Scrapyard Wars. Sorry, Linus. Love you both. And myself, Rooster? Who do I think is gonna win? I think Luke is gonna win because just, uh... I think Linus will win because he knows how to climb trees. Which, you know, is really important for building computers, after all. Welcome to Scrapyard Wars 2, the finale. We're doing the format a little bit differently this time because it's not as simple as, oh, well, let's benchmark it and find out who wins. So we actually have a panel of four judges, including Taryn, Brandon, and the two Nicks. So one person for each of us who toiled with us through the entire endeavor, and two people who have never seen the system. First section is creativity, worth 10 points. Next up is effectiveness, worth another 10 points. Then aesthetics, 10 more points. Acoustics, 10 more points. And finally, overall, just general category, 10 points. So now, a total of 50. The overall is very much up to the judgment of, well, the judges. So if we did things like went over time, went over budget, or utilized lifelines. So if we got outside help with our project that we didn't directly pay for, then they're going to have to factor that in to our scores. I would like to point out that it was actually just for lifelines. And going over for? time and going over budget, we're actually like completely breaking everything, but it's okay. We'll move forward, I guess. So you guys can actually come around here. We're facing the system here. First of all, I would like to welcome all the judges here today Thank to the you. unveiling of the six. Ghetto okay. FR 3000. You're honored to have me here. First thing that I would like to point out. Okay. First thing that I would like to point out is the 
patent pending easy fill technology oh, that we have in the top yeah, of case. Very nice. So okay. as you will see in a moment, this goes into the computer and is actually the reservoir. So you can fill the computer directly or drain the computer directly just through the top. Very easy to do. Another thing in our patent pending easy technology is the, uh, we're inspired by Tesla technology. So what we did was we introduced the power panel. Not the power wall, but the power panel. So on the back of the computer here, if you guys kind of rotate around a little bit, oh. you can see that there's a mounted power bar. So and actually oh. only one power cable actually leaves the computer. So you can plug, plug your monitor into there, you can plug your speakers into there. All of your power can plug directly into the computer like with our patented, patent pending easy uh, power panel. So once you open the side of the case, you actually get to the, the, the challenging parts of this build. So you can see we spared no cost. I don't know if I'm going to mention brand names, but yes, it is a high quality, high quality water bottle. Eco-friendly, actually, yes. Here, this is, this is uh, the Luke Industries. Luke Industries, yes. More like Luke Warm. Oh! As you can see here, the benchmark is currently running and we're at a not too bad 55 degrees. Let's go ahead and see what the judges think. I actually discovered something quite interesting if you want to hop on over here. Oh, I just saw this little thing leaking a little bit of water into the power Whoa. supply. Oh so, no. I don't know how reliable oh, it is now. Oh no. Is this a functional build? Mm-mm. Uh, it, it, it's not. We saw that water leaking straight into the into the power supply, which is not good. It'd have to be fixed up. Honestly, how bad do we know that leak is? Okay, so he, aside that, from our bias judge, we think that uh, the build may be functional if he fixes the link, but at this point, we're not entirely sure. Ladies and gentlemen, 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 you've seen the zero. Now you're gonna see the hero. Welcome to the unveiling of the winner of Scrapyard Wars 2. <laughs> My system is horrible. <laughs> oh, damn! Girl, that looks good. This is the Uber Cooler Magic Machine 5000. It features what I call, and this is my uh, personal trademark, the, uh, <clears throat> uh, what do I call it? I don't remember what I call it. Uh, <clears throat> this is a copper coil cooling system, or CCS for short. So let's start by firing up the system just to demonstrate that it does in fact work. You can see here at the front of my case, all bays are populated by either a drive or a bay cover. I also have an eSATA port for outstanding connectivity, very modern. Two USB 2.0 ports, my air intakes are here. This door folds out more than a typical door. You can see it's on two hinges, so that if you accidentally bump it, it doesn't break off as easily. Quiet. Huh? I think that's a 10 out of 10 for acoustics. Not that I can uh, tell the judges too much about how to judge the system, but that's a 10 out of 10. Now you can clearly see the copper coil is very st stable. Okay? This is the moment. Everyone brace, your, brace yourselves. This is a thing of beauty in here. Okay, hold on. There we go. You see that security? It doesn't lock, but it's so hard to remove, you'd think it was locked. So this, my friends, is the heart and soul of this machine. Now, there is some water down here. That is old water. That is old water from this last night when this was still leaking. Now, I have to confess, I did go a little bit over time. Probably about 18 to 20 hours over time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, we've gone with the, what I call a camel top system where the cooling hump is located on top <laughs> of the system. Instead of using fittings soldered or brazed to the ends of our copper, we have actually just zip-tied tubing directly onto our <laughs> copper pipe. Is that reliable? Actually, it seems to be working okay, surprisingly. Yeah. Another innovative cost-saving measure, and I'm saving this one, is the fact that the CPU block is using sawed off pieces of this tubing soldered to the copper top of our fully custom CNC cut water block as fittings. So, 
We brought our budget by returning about $40 worth of fittings that we had already purchased by returning it. We brought our total spent on the water cooling down to $198. Just shy of the 200 mark. For our system, we paid 280 and I bought some uh, Ninjago Ninjas that I was planning to put in it, but they weren't, they weren't very poseable and I forgot. <laughs> If you want to come over here, judges, and have a look at where we're sitting, we've been under load for about seven minutes while I've been talking, and we're sitting at around 87 degrees on the CPU, which gets us fully turboed up on our Core i7-930, which is a very high heat output CPU, by the way. Full performance, not the lowest temperatures, but incredibly quiet. With the CPU actually being passively cooled by the copper loop. But wait, there's more. If you had a little bit more money to spend than we did, you could get yourself a room fan, oscillating room fan right there. Cools the coil, cools you, cools the coil, cools you. Hot summer day, computer's good, you're good, everyone's good. And that is my presentation. Thank you, judges. I think it's about time the judges pick a winner and pick a sore loser. For Luke's system, 138 points. The possible total scoring for Linus' system out of 200, 100. 100? 30. One. Yes. I can't believe you got that close to me. That's actually ridiculous. <laughs> yes. yeah. Die. Was a lifeline, almost a whole day of extra time. Yours will live. Thanks for watching Scrapyard Wars 2. Uh, we will definitely be back with more Scrapyard Wars. The scrapping. Like and scrap. Like and scrap. Like and subscribe. Like and scrap button. And uh, we could have a special celebrity guest on the next episode of Scrapyard Wars. A very, a very hard-nippled celebrity yes. guest. See you next time. Bye.